Okay, uh, if you're watching this and you have not watched the show before the episode, before this part one, please go back. Um, at least watch the last 10 minutes of last week's show, or not last week, or the prior show, because I'll probably put both of these out this week. Let me start from the beginning. Um, let's talk about depression. Woo, let's talk about depression. <clears throat> um, I think for me, it was circumstantial, meaning I was um, physically, physically and verbally abused as a child. And the person that abused me, I love dearly. I love with all of my heart. And uh, she has asked for forgiveness and I have given it to her. And I do not hold her accountable because she has done everything in her power and will to prove to me how she has changed and how she is so sorry she's done such things. And so this um, video is not a rebuke to her. It's just me telling my story because you know I love you. <laughs> but I was abused as a child. I remember one time. Um, oh, God. Yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to go fast. It's only been a 25 minute video. We'll get into the pressure. I remember one time. Um, first of all, my father was in Germany. And. Um, something had happened. It was a, definitely I was just being a child. And. Uh, I was punched as I moved to Germany, 11 years old, probably 10, 11 years old, punched, beat in the face. And my face was disfigured and um, I couldn't eat anything sweet because the uh, sores in my mouth. And I remember I had to be out of my mind. I had to escape because the one thing I remember, we were at a beauty salon store. It was one of those like, colleges where um, you go get cheap hair done because the students are doing it and a lot of the church members would go there and so I was outside and I remember one of the church kids asking me what happened to your face and I remember it shocked me and brought me back to reality because I had to been beaten out of consciousness and I'm not talking about consciousness when they say that like the person is out and they're not you know no but I escaped I left and um, uh, he asked me what happened and I said uh, I fell down the stairs and I remember him saying something like I, f I fell down the stairs too and that happens as if he fully understood what had happened and was giving me some kind of solace. <clears throat> so that's just that that's just one instance at 11 years old. And I already displaced a military child. Um, so then I can give you a couple more instances, but we'll leave it at that. So that's a thing in itself that is not necessarily talked about. You just swallow it. And I need parents to understand you go off on your kids and you even feel bad about it. But then you don't go back and try to have that conversation with the child, whether it's a verbal or physical or whatever that thing is. You do understand that child is too young to process it, maybe like you're processing it. And so you swallow it because life goes on. It's over. Life goes on. There are things to do. You got to go to school. You got to move out the country. You got to da 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 da. <clears throat> and so um, that's one thing. The next thing was just our crazy life <laughs> because, you know, uh, my father was in the military. Number three was um, I am a gay man and um, I was raised in the black Pentecostal church. 
The number four <clears throat> was I believe that uh, my family, the bloodline, suffers from mental illnesses. Um, there's a part of my family that is crazy as hell. They pop off and go off and they can't control their emotions. They can't control themselves. They, they're erratic. They are crazy. And I love them, but they're not well. They don't know how to have relationships. They don't know how to, they don't know how to intermingle. They just don't know. And so I, I had a quadruple homicide going on. And um, so to make a long story short, you fast forward to 36 and I confront it. And I go to counseling and I tell my therapist, I say, she says, why are you here? I said, if I don't get help, I am going to sabotage all of my dreams. I'm just, I'm just going gonna, gonna to mess it up. <clears throat> and that was the journey to get me on this space. The challenging part about this is when you go to fight something, when you go to confront something and you are now aware that it's there, you feel the blunt of it full force. So if I never decided to, um, uh, let me close this door real quick because I, I don't know how sensitive this mic is and the AC just cut off. <laughs> All right, so when, when, you, uh, <clears throat> when you decide not to confront your demons, the only thing you're facing is the repercussion of your demon. You go off on somebody, you get in a fight, you miss a deadline, da-da-da-da-da. But when you are aware of the demon, now you're not facing the repercussions, you're facing the demon. And so when I have a bout with depression... I'm not fighting the lethargy. I'm not fighting the overeating or oversexing or over this or over that. I'm fighting the demon because I am conscious that is what is up against me. And I'm using demon loosely. I am, uh, I'm not trying to uh, spiritualize this. I'm using demon uh, figuratively. Um, and so, man... It has been a hell of a journey. And I just, I think the best way that I've dealt with it is admit it and talk about it and understand my triggers. Because that's one thing that counseling and Prozac helped me do. It helped me understand, it gave me enough space to see what triggered me. And for me, undealt with situations trigger me. So let's just say you and I are friends, and we are friends. You know, we are really friends. But let's just say you and I are friends that hang out and go to the mall, right? And I try on some pants, and you be like, oh, look at your old fat self. You can't fit those pants. It is not healthy, and, 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 and it's not a joking matter, and it bothers me. It is not healthy for me to just swallow that because I've had to swallow all of my... <laughs> God, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I had to swallow all of my life. I had to swallow my identity. I had to swallow my pain. I had to swallow my emotions. And so anytime that I have to swallow anything or put anything on the back burner, it, it is going to explode in a matter of 48 hours. And it might not be at the person that gave it to me. It might be the person that cuts me off on the road and I speed up and roll my window down and give them the cussing out of their life. And so that is a trigger for me. Not getting rest is a trigger for me. If I don't rest, I mean, literally. Now, check this. The same thing can make you laugh and make you cry. I make a lot of money a year because I am a hard, never, never sleeping worker. There are times that I will work straight through the night, go to bed at 4 a.m., wake up at 7 a.m. Now, you put that against if I don't get enough rest, I get triggered. <laughs> and then I have these episodes. And so... I have had to pull away from work. I had to choose me over my passion sometimes. Sometimes I have to choose me over my relationship. Sometimes I have to choose me over deadlines. There are times that, especially I was working this conference in July, and people would need emails and people would need things done, but I would hit that wall. As soon as I hit that wall, I would get up and leave and go to bed. And the reality is I had to just tell myself, whoever was looking for that email would have to wait another five hours because they're not getting it right now. They will get it when they get it. Because you, if you're going to take on your demons, you have to choose yourself first. 
And I learned that the hard way. I learned that being successful in a project and pitiful in my person because I would exceed in the project, but in the, in, you know, behind the scenes, I've cussed people out. I've made people mad. I've, I've disrespected people. My, my, my bills are not paid. This is not right. And that is not right. And da, 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 da. Everybody's a plot. Everybody around me is happy. Clients are happy. Everybody's happy. And I'm just shot. So I had to make a pact with myself that I will never choose anything or anybody over me. And because I do that, I am hardly ever triggered. I had to make up my pack on myself that no matter how dumb or stupid I feel, to always be honest. Honest. You know, honest. That hurt my feelings. When you said this, that bothered me in a way that I can't describe. And I know you didn't mean it. And I hate to stop your joyful life and bring you down to this space. But I got to tell you this. And I'm not being honest for them. I'm being honest. I've chosen me. Money is a trigger. I have to have money. I cannot be low on money. At the moment that I get low on money, I get immensely sad and heavy and dark. So I am debt free right now. I literally cannot take on debt. I called my coach. Uh, I want my, some, my, my teeth cosmetically done. I want them cleaned. I want them straightened. I want braces. Da 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 da. And I was losing patience with saving the money, so I called my coach. I said, Coach, um, what do you think about me just, you know? And I have good credit. I said, What do you think about me just taking out a loan to, uh, you know, get my teeth done real quick? And he reminded me. He says, But remember, when you have to make payments, you that takes away from your money. That you, that you need throughout the month when you have installment loans, installments or payments or whatever. He says, and that's a trigger for you. And I don't know, I'm sure he didn't say don't do it because that's just not our relationship. But my response was, got it. I just have to have patience then, LOL. And he says, right. <laughs> because money, not having money is a trigger for me. I need to have money. I need to have nice things. I need to give my home. I spent... Oh, Jesus Christ. God, I spent so much money on this house. It's a nice house, too. And if it was pristinely clean, I would actually do some B-roll and show you. But the couch I have and the furniture I have and the TVs I have and the office space that you can't see and everything, I spent money on it because what happens is when I've had a long day and, I, and my house has to be clean, I pay somebody to clean it. Um, and then in between that, I clean it myself because my house has to be spotless because that's a trigger for me. So when I've had a long day and I come back home to a clean house, it like embraces me and comforts me and it makes me feel at home. And I need that. Um, not eating is a trigger. Now, I do go on these three, five, 10 day juice fasts and I do that uh, often and that's, that's healthy for me, believe it or not. But just a consistent long time of denying myself uh, food for diet reasons is not healthy for me. So I have to give myself cake and stuff in portions because that's a way of giving love to myself, you know, allowing myself to feel at ease and not under pressure. And this might not be for you, but the message is you have to you have to face yourself. And embrace your, oh man, I was having a conversation with a mentee yesterday. He was in, you know, and that guy, I, I, you know, I really love this guy. Um, um, he reminds me so much of me, interesting enough. He really does. And I was having a conversation with him and we were talking about, he was like, I got to clean up my, I don't want to cuss right now because this is part two and I don't feel like doing beeps the, the, tonight. So <laughs> I have to clean up my sh, my S-H-I-T. And um, I said, no, you don't need to clean it up. You need to embrace it. I'm going to let that settle for a second. This whole idea of cleaning up your, you clean it up after you embrace it, meaning this might be a mess, but it's the mess that I created. So because it's my creation, I'm even going to honor 
the mess that I created. Now, some of you might not agree with it, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, you ain't fought enough demons yet. <laughs> you ain't looked in the mirror hard enough. Because in my opinion, true maturity is embracing the good, bad, and the ugly about you. See, I'm just not going to be like, I don't look at my downfalls like, oh, I don't, oh, I can't stand that part about me. Because that's not true love. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. When you love someone, you love everything about them, including the things that are not, that get on your nerves. And that's the same thing for you. If you truly love you, you love everything about you, even the you create, even the mistakes you make. Even the things you do on purpose, you love it about you. Don't mean you won't change it, but this kind of rejection, because rejecting your, is still rejecting you, because that's what you created. You don't reject nothing about you. You embrace it, and you love you like you would love a baby. Check it. If you have a baby, and that baby got a diaper when it, on itself. I cannot believe I'm not using it. I just don't feel like the beeps today, y'all. I'm, I'm dumb. If y'all want this in a timely manner, you're going to let me say, and so send whole word because I don't feel like the beeps. Editing and posting it. But when a baby uses the restroom on itself, using the bathroom on itself, you don't be like, oh my God, I hate you. I hate you because you're on yourself. No, you be like, oh Lord, you didn't you had an accident. And you, you pick the baby up. You're like, oh, girl, you stink. Oh, oh, you stink. And then you plan with the baby feet while you wiping it. You clean it up. No part of your energy is telling that baby, I don't like you because you did this to yourself. You are cleaning it up, right? You put another diaper on because you know the baby's going to do it again. And then you pick the baby up and you love the baby and you go on. You wash your hands. You dispose of the waste. And you move on. And if you are not treating yourself like that, you are mistreating yourself. And these are the things I learned dealing with my depression. I don't fight my depression. I confront it. I am aware of it. I do things to not be in it. But I don't beat myself up. I talk to myself all the time. I was supposed to go to the gym today. Literally, I was supposed to go to the gym today. But yesterday, I was so exhausted, I knew today I needed to just rest. That's why I'm doing this video at 9.47 at night. This video was supposed to be done at 10 a.m. this morning. But I stayed, I laid around, and I rested. I needed to be there for me today. And because I did that, does it have it where I'm up late doing these videos? Yes. But do I feel good right now? Yes. I went and got a massage today. I really, you know, I'm budgeting and I got a lot going on and I was working a project and I spent a lot of personal money in this project that I got to do the report today to get the money back. So I spent a lot of money on this project. And so my money's tied up in business right now. And so I really needed the money I spent today to just stay in my expense account. But above that, I needed a massage today. I got a massage. I went to Cheesecake Factory. I ate all the bread I wanted. I got a salmon meal and, and a pumpkin cheesecake that's in my kitchen right now. Why you do all that? You burn you this cows, you're gonna get I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get fat because I take care of myself. But today it was about feeding me the person. And what me likes to eat is food. Me, the person, likes massages. Um, <sighs> so if I can bounce back, um, I used to think I was so ugly. And uh, I used to think I used to didn't like my lips. I usually didn't like my thighs and my butt because they're big. It's, it, you know, I'm, you know, people love it, and I've learned to love it too. I usually didn't like my smile. I usually didn't like my voice. I didn't like nothing about me. 
And I have learned to love me. And the more and more I embrace me, the more and more authentic I become. So now I don't have no problems showing up. Whether I'm in front of somebody that I know or somebody I don't know, I'm just going to show up and be me because I, 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 I trust me because I know me and I've spent a lot of time with me. Um, and I'm happy about me and I'm happy for me. And I am growing so content right now. And I used to think that I didn't deserve love and I'm beginning to do things that let me know that I deserve love. I'm putting myself out there. I'm, I'm texting people and saying, you know, put, you know, hey, putting my intentions out. I want to go out to eat with you. Put me on your GD calendar. <laughs> and there was a time that I would send those texts out and then have an anxiety attack. Oh, my God, what they're going to say. And I don't care anymore. Why? Because me wanting to go out with you is an authentic desire that comes from me. And I'm not going to be embarrassed. And if you reject me, that's okay because I haven't rejected me. The times that I was most afraid of rejection was the times that I was doing the most rejecting of myself. And the times that I started to recognize my good was the times that I started to embrace my bad. To embrace the fact that I'm always late to everything. To embrace the fact that I will cuss you out. I mean, just that I'll drop you like a bad habit so fast. We can be best friends and I'll just be like, you know what? You've pissed me off. Die. And when I embraced that versus acting like that wasn't real, then it changed the way I communicated with my friends. And it changed the way I went about so that I'm never in that situation. But it's something that I could not control before because I was too busy hating that about me, hating my coldness. Now I use my coldness for my benefit and I embrace the warmth of me. I hope this helped. Sometimes I talk too much about me. <laughs> I over I over intoxicate myself with me and I over intoxicate anybody around me with me. And, you know, it is what it is. But you got to learn what works for you. If long walks do it, then go take a long walk. If driving, do it. Fill your gas tank. I don't care if you got to. Take a piece of your electricity bill and put gas in your car to drive 20 miles up the road and drive back. Show the universe that you care more about your internal than you do your external. And I'll, I'll say this without apology. Every time I do that, the money that I spend or invest in me. It's outside of my budget because I need it, not because I want it. Like the teeth thing, I don't, I just, I want that. That's not a need. But like the massages and things that I do to make sure I'm taken care of, the money always comes back to me. Um, it's a shame, and I'm closing with this, that certain religious institutions talk more about sowing seed into others and sowing seed into things than do about sowing seeds into ourselves. And don't get me wrong, I am a seed sower. I just sold an $888.88 seed on Monday. And um, that seed is gonna change my life. That seed has changed my life already. I'm already reaping the benefits from it. So don't try me with, I ain't talking down because I believe that you are supposed to sow seed. And the seed that I sow is money and time. I give a lot of time and energy to people as well. But I ain't talking about that right now. I'm talking about sowing into yourself. I'm talking about you should, the person that you should give to the most is you. 
You should give yourself time. You should give yourself energy. You should give yourself good words. You should give yourself joy and recreation. I sit around the house and laugh at myself and have a ball on purpose. I learned how to do that by accident, but I learned how to do that. You know, sometimes I take myself out to eat. Here lately, I'll get a whole thing of pizza. I'll cut on my Netflix and get me some juice and something to sweet. And I sit there and eat and laugh. <laughs> or get caught up in a documentary. And, and after it's over, I'd be like, I could, I could tell I'm like, Whew, all right, you feel better, huh? Excuse me. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. But I exhale because it's like, okay, you took care of yourself. Please take care of you. The entire world is in a pandemic and under distress right now. And who knows when this is gonna be over. And if you're in America right now, the, the nation is in political distress and it spills over into our interpersonal relationships and how we view each other. You know, family members and coworkers, some got the vaccine, some don't, some are right wing, some are left wing, some are black, some are white. And there's a lot of pressure going on you got to take care of you. Do not be like my neighbor upstairs. Don't dope cope. Don't medicate, meditate. I love you guys. Uh, this, this part two wasn't funny. I'm pretty sure I said something silly. I know I did. But uh, you can do it. I believe in you. All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs>